Hello, my name is Kirk Petrie. I'm a registered respiratory therapist for Tender Hearts Home Healthcare in Lynchburg, Virginia. I'm going to be showing you a few instructional videos to better learn the equipment that you're going to be using at home on your new baby. Congratulations. The first video I'm going to start with is on the pulse oximeter. And the pulse oximeters we use here at Tender Hearts are the Massimo Rad 8 pulse oxes. So I hope you enjoy the video. Here we have the Massimo Rad 8 pulse oximeter. We use this on all of our patients at Tender Hearts Home Health due to its extreme ability to pick up low perfusion signals. Uh, and typically we see a lot of low perfusion babies when they're born premature and they go home really small. Um, since we're using the sensors typically on their feet, and that's the lowest you know, uh, from your heart, uh, we need a machine and a sensor that's going to do the best to pick up the best quality signal that it can. And we believe that the Massimo RAD8 is that machine. Uh, the RAD8 is also very patient friendly. Um, there's only really two buttons that you have to worry about. And that is one, the on off button. Um, to press, you just press and release. The machine will turn on. It'll cycle through the alarm settings that your doctor has set for you. Tender Hearts has already programmed those settings into your machine and has saved them and locked them in. If in the future your physician wishes to change those settings, they'll write us an order, fax it to us. You'll probably have to call us and we'll come out to your home and we'll make those settings uh, per the physician's request. Um, second button is the alarm silence button. If an alarm does go off and you would like to silence the machine to allow you to troubleshoot the machine without having an alarm going off in the background, you can press this yellow button. It will silence the alarm for a short period of time, allowing you to troubleshoot the piece of equipment, checking the sensor, checking the position, checking the cannula, making sure it's on the baby, if the baby's using oxygen. Just going through your basic checklist of all of the stuff that the home care provider has already taught you. Um, Third button that you may or may not want to use, this is the brightness indicator. Um, you can actually scroll through four levels of brightness, one obviously being the lowest, all the way up to four being the brightest. Uh, the brightest level is going to burn your battery quicker than the lowest level. Uh, normal battery life in these monitors is around six hours. Uh, it's important to keep the monitor plugged in while you're at home. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, so that the battery remains fully charged in the event of a power outage or an emergency and you need to go to the physician or the hospital, then you'll have a monitor with a fully charged battery. If you tend to get into the habit of unplugging it and using it on battery power during the day and the power were to go out at night, then you wouldn't have a full battery at nighttime when is when it's more important. So that we, we just ask that you keep it plugged in 24-7. All right, now with your monitor comes your patient cable. Your patient cable has two different sides. It has the monitor side and it has the patient side. The monitor side is going to click into your port on the machine. And if you notice on the side of this here, it has a groove on the outside of here and a groove on the inside of here. And you just line them up. Push it down until you hear it lock into place, both in the bottom and on the top. And this piece right here is where you plug in your oximeter sensor that you're going to then put on the baby's foot. This is what your pulse oximeter sensor looks like. This is the end that goes on the patient. This is the end that plugs into the patient cable. You take this and you line up the two notches with the two notches. You push it in, close the plastic casing, locks it in. When you turn it on, you should see a light, and you should see no light on this side. So what we have is we have a light, and then we have a sensor. And what this does is it detects the brightness of blood through your skin. This is an example, and I'm going to set, I'm going to hit the alarm silent so that I can explain this. That's an example of an alarm because my heart rate eventually initially was lower than the heart rate low alarm was set on this machine. Um, as you can see 
It's no longer alarming. This is blinking, just letting you know that it's active. The top number here is your oxygen saturation level. The bottom number here is your heart rate. This bouncy green bar up here, that's your signal quality meter. So if it has a good high signal, then this is going to go up and it's going to stay green. If it's got a low signal and it's not getting a good read, then it can change to either orange or red depending on how bad the signal is. In the event that it is red, chances are whatever is numbers are on here, don't trust it. Take the sensor, remove it, and put it on a different part of the patient. Typically just placing the sensor back on is enough to fix whatever the problem is. Um, I'm actually going to show you uh, on our mannequin how to place this on a baby's foot. All right, and here we have our awesome trach care training dummy. And on this little doll, what I'm going to do is show you how the oximeter sensor should be placed on the baby's foot. Um, I don't know how well you can see, but I will try to do my best to show you on the baby's foot. You have two sides. You have the big toe side and you have the pinky toe side. Typically your pinky toe side is going to be a thinner area of your foot and the pinky, uh, big toe side is a thicker area. What we want is we want for that light to be able to make it through the skin and we want that sensor to be able to read how bright the blood is on the other side. So place, placing it on the thinner part of the foot is going to help achieve that goal. Especially in babies as they grow older, this side of the foot will become rather thick. and won't Actually, it'll become very difficult to get a reading through that side. So all you want to do is you just want to place it in, to where the light is on one side of the baby's foot and the sensor is on the other so they can read each other through the baby. Now, I'm not going to take this off the plastic, I just wanted to show you. And then you would wrap it around the child like that. It would obviously stay like that. We also use Coban tape um, that allows you to wrap around the sensor and it also uh, it sticks to itself, not to the baby, so it's very safe for the skin. Um, the other thing that's good about Coban is it will help these sensors last longer since we like to tape some of the little white cord here actually to the patient's foot. Um, this way what that does is it provides strain relief so that when the baby kicks his foot and things like that, it's pulling from a lower part of the sensor. Let me hit silence on that again, since obviously it's not picking up. But it allows it to pull from down here instead from up here where the tiny little wires go into here. It'll just help the sensor just last that much longer. Um, typical Medicaid allowables for these sensors is only six per month. So that means that we need to make these sensors last uh, for five days. So it's very important that we baby them. Um, on that note with the sensor, if it's on for 24 hours a day, we like for the sensor site to be changed every eight hours. So basically three times a day. So in the morning, you can change it from one foot to the other. In the afternoon, change it back to this foot. And at nighttime before he goes to bed, then change it back over to the other foot. This way it allows for the skin to not get irritated and it also helps prevent any skin breakdown, um, things of that nature. Things to watch for when you put this around your baby's feet is to look at the toes. What you don't want to see is purple toes. You want it to be snug and tight and not moving around, but you also don't want it to be cutting off the circulation. So just watch for that make sure it's not too tight. Um, Obviously, don't use this in water. If you're going to give your baby a bath, then take it off. Um, for the duration of the bath, if he can't be off the pulse ox for any reason, then a sponge bath is going to have to suffice so that we don't get this uh, wet. Um, other than that, that is pulse oximeter 101. One last note I wanted to mention. These up and down arrows on the monitor typically really aren't used in the home setting, but in case they're bumped, if you accidentally hit the up or the down, I'm actually going to put this back on my finger to show you what will happen so that we can get a signal. Once it starts reading that it's on my finger, it typically takes eight seconds to get a background read. Since I hit this up button, every time a heart beats, this machine is going to audibly beep and let you know. 
and you can make it go loud, louder, or you can turn it down with this. Um, some parents like to hear that if they're in the other room. Uh, for most parents, it drives them crazy. So in the event that that accidentally gets knocked, you can just hit the down arrow until it stops beeping completely. Um, that's been one of my biggest complaints so far is why is this beeping? It wasn't beeping when you gave it to us. So just watch, keep an eye for those arrows. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to give Tender Hearts a call. Uh, you can reach us at 434-385-4001. We have respiratory therapists on call 24 hours a day. Um, or you can visit us at our website, www.tenderheartshomehealth.com. You could also visit us and like us on our Facebook page, uh, Facebook slash Tender Hearts Home Health. Thanks for watching this video, and I hope to bring you many more.